Hello and welcome to another exciting installment of real-world motorized mountain bicycling. Today's fun-filled adventure, maintenance, specifically to adjust the valve clearance height inside the motor. Today I'm going to show you how to do that. Here's what I'm going to need on this task. First, I'm going to need a flathead screwdriver. That's not only for uh, detaching my muffler from the, from the bike, but also for tightening down the valves a 10 millimeter wrench that will help me get the motor off of the bike. Uh, same thing with a, a four millimeter Allen wrench. A spark plug uh, wrench so I can get the spark plug out. You're also going to need a tool called a thickness gauge. Specifically make sure that for whatever the specifications of your motor you're going to need to make sure you have a thickness gauge that uh, allows you to measure that distance. For today I'm going to be using a, a 0.05 millimeter. You also need an eight millimeter wrench. This is uh, to help get the valves loosened so that I can adjust the height. Let's get started. One of the steps in this procedure, of course, is to remove the valve cover uh, off of the bike, and I'll show you that in a couple steps. But uh, beneath the valve cover, there is a gasket that can get damaged if you do it wrong. You try you know, everything you can to not damage that gasket. One way of avoiding damage to that gasket is by uh, removing it at a time when the engine is warm. It doesn't have to be super hot, but make sure it's warm. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, start my motor, let it run for a few minutes. All right, I think that's probably about enough time. It's been about five minutes or so. So the very first thing I'm going to do is, uh, as soon as I can, get that um, valve cover off. Uh, I'm going to do that before I remove the motor from the bike because that will help me. Oh, it's a little warm. Uh, that will help to keep the motor stable uh, during the removal process. Okay, before, of course, I uh, remove the motor or the gas tank, I probably should um, drain it. This won't take too, too long. Onward with the removal of the gas tank. I did neglect to say you need a 10 millimeter uh, wrench to get these uh, little bolt things off. I don't know what that was. I have bracket off completely now. Yeah. Next, I need to remove the spark plug. This spark plug, how to get the plug part off. For the sake of doing the, uh, the actual adjustment, I'm gonna need to remove my motor from the bike. First I need to get my throttle cable out. I'm gonna do my exhaust pipe. Next, I need to remove the motor. There are only four pieces that are holding the motor together. I think, oh, let's see, I have to do my electrical off too. Okay, so I've got my electrical, my uh, kill switch off. It's too big. It says Goldilocks. Next one. All right. All right. So there we go. All right. Step one. We have to make sure that the motor is in what's called top dead center uh, position. The easiest way that I found out how to do it is first of all, you need to uh, just if you pull your starter just a little bit and observe which way the motor turns. For us, it's uh, gonna be counterclockwise. And I'm gonna continue to rotate in the direction the motor goes. This is the exhaust valve, because it's closest to the exhaust as soon as the air intake, so the valve opens. I'm gonna push down, it's open, and the exhaust gets put, in, put out. And then the air intake goes in. And then the next one is the compression cycle and then it goes all over again. Exhaust, air intake. So the way I find top dead center is find at the point when the, uh, when the air intake valve is beginning to open and I take something round and you know relatively clean. It can be a screwdriver, it doesn't really matter. I use a screwdriver in this case. And I'm gonna insert it right into the, where the spark plug goes, very gently. Right here, okay? So, 
that the uh, screwdriver is on top. Then I'm going to go ahead and keep rotating so it goes through the, the air intake. And then when it comes up again for the time, that wherever it rises the most and begins right at the point where it begins to go down again, that's top dead center. Got it? So that's, that's the easiest way I know how to do it. I now take my eight millimeter um, hex wrench and I just loosen these guys up like so. You don't have to take them out, just enough to, to make them go. And then you take your gap measurement tool. Again, for this particular type of engine, I happen to know that uh, the proper valve uh, height clearance is uh, 0 0.05 millimeters. And the way to adjust it, where I just put my, oh, here it is, right in front of me. What you want to do is you want to stick this little flat thing. Make sure you only got, have one because sometimes these stick together and you might have two of them and that would just be bad. Uh, it just wouldn't give you the right measurement. Uh, you want to put it in there and I can already tell there is just way, way too much room in there. So I'm going to go ahead and start to tighten this down until I feel a little bit of rub, just a little bit of rub. That's too much. I'll be very gentle. Down, down, down. That's too much. I'm going to hold that there and tighten it by hand a little bit. That way it's not going to move. And now, put that in, still perfect. There I go. Okay. That was for the air intake. Now I do the exhaust port. That's all I use. That's it. So now I've um, properly spaced my valve clearance according to specs and I'm ready to reassemble the, uh, the motor. So I'm going to put that puppy on. Try to make sure it's straight. Don't want to strip them. That one's tight. That one's tight. Tight. And again, you want it to be nice and tight. Uh, don't not over tight though. So make sure that uh, this little nub is screwed all the way down, because <laughs> if the circuit isn't properly met in your in your um, spark plug, again your motor's not going to turn over the way it should. Down there, get your handy dandy tool. Get on. Don't over tighten it. Put the wires back together. Okay. Now comes the little bumpery thingy. The gas tank. That wasn't supposed to happen. So now that I've got the valve um, clearance height adjusted, and uh, I got my gas tank back on as much as I have. It's time to put the uh, reconnect the motor back onto the bike. When I did through the support. I need to put down. Putting the throttle. Back on. Now, now it's done. I'm gonna have to come back because I'm now gonna fix my throttle housing and that's gonna be a different episode. So I'll be right back and we'll do the test of the engine, which of course is one of the most important steps of any kind of repair. All right, see you in a few minutes. Engine sounds good. A lot of vibration. Interesting. It sound this motor sounds a little different than it did. Everything feels good to me. Kill switch. Yep. Kill switch works. Crashed right. it. So it was successful. I appreciate you 
coming on this adventure with me and leave a comment, uh, give me some advice, ask questions. This is a learning experience for me too. But uh, until next time, thank you very much and uh, hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Real World Motorized Mountain Bicycle.